right, we're going to do a little little science, little sciencey sort of uh, experiment here with the uh, the VW. This is my 1979. Uh, Super Beetle. It came originally with uh, fuel injection, but we've converted it uh, to run off carburetor with this uh, 34 pick 3 carburetor from J-Bugs. Uh, this carburetor has a number of different vacuum ports. It has one on the side that's a ported vacuum port, and this one in the front, which is, I mean, if you look at it, that, those two look like they're on the same circuit. So, I mean, we're going to call those identical ports. They, they go to the same part in the carburetor. It's above the throttle. And then there's this one. This one right here is, um, it, you can see it goes at an angle, it goes below the throttle, and that will give you a vacuum uh, pressure from the intake manifold, uh, as opposed to this one, which gives you vacuum, uh, reactional, reactionary vacuum from above the throttle. And it, it changes when the throttle position changes. So um, the question is that when you do one of these conversions from fuel injection, the, carb or the distributor that you have typically has a lot of wires and stuff here. has two vacuum ports. You see one back here and one right here. This one on the back is for advancing the timing. And the one on the back um, actually is for retarding the vacuum. And it has a, a, a second diaphragm on the outside of this one that will move the... Uh, uh, the, the the vacuum advanced in the other direction, uh, and it's for when you get to the the higher end of your um, your acceleration, uh, you, you know you want to adjust the the peak of your advance because there's one more thing that will advance the distributor, and that is the centripetal advance that's inside the distributor itself. It's a mechanical advance. So you have uh, the um, the advance on this side, the retard on that side, and then an advance that's centripetal on the inside of the distributor. So those are the things that will adjust your, um, your engine timing. And engine timing is important. Um, as you accelerate, the engine's running faster, but the fuel doesn't burn any faster. So the reason why you accelerate your timing um, is so that as the engine starts running faster, you want to um, start burning the, the fuel sooner. Uh, so that way it won't uh, pre-ignite or you won't get uh, knocking in the engine when it gets at the higher uh, uh, the higher RPMs. And that, that's really what that whole system is about uh, because as the engine starts going faster, you, you need to tune where that detonation occurs when the spark is uh, starting the fire on the engine. It, it's very short timing. I mean, it is an explosion and it happens very quickly. But um, you need to get it to start at a different time when the engine is in a different speed. So that's what that's all, really all about. So what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to demonstrate the base timing, uh, 7.5 uh, degrees before top dead center. And I'm going to, um, so I've got my timing light right here. And then I've got uh, two vacuum gauges. One of them connected to the ported side, which is where typically your distributor advance goes and one to the vacuum uh, which is the uh, the intake manifold side which is on the other side of the throttle and what we're going to do is I'm going to start the engine up uh, with without any kind of vacuum advance the I'm going to leave these the vacuums uh, unplugged off of the uh, the distributor and I'm just going to uh, accelerate um, and show you what happens with the vacuum pressure on either side of the throttle uh, as you as you tap the throttle and then as you accelerate through the uh, the power curve on the engine so uh, let's go ahead and start this thing up it's going to get a little loud but I wanted to demonstrate what we're going to try to do before it gets too loud um, and we'll be able to see the difference in the gauges again this one is manifold pressure and this one is ported um, the ported vacuum pressure above the throttle all right let's go ahead and start this thing up okay got the engine running at about Almost 800 RPM. It's a uh, confirm the timing. So the timing is uh, roughly. I don't know if you can catch it in the video. It's about seven before top dead center. That's what we're aiming for. And you can see we have. No vacuum pressure whatsoever going on. Nothing very, very minimal. There might be a little bit of recording over here, 
smooth. They're, they're exactly the same gauge. But uh, I'm going to tap the throttle just a little bit. And you'll see what happens with these vacuum gauges. Okay, so this one over here is connected above. It's on the ported side. And that would actually, that would affect the distributor during acceleration from an idle, which is exactly the, the behavior that you're looking for. This one over here barely touches when, when you get the throttle going. And when you get the engine going, it really starts to move. dump it, that's the behavior that you get. So that kind of proves the point about which one that you want to have connected. Um, and I think that on these particular distributors, or these, when you have both of them, you only want to use the one port. But we're going to do a couple of driving tests, and I'll go ahead and see what, what, is, what it does when we connect this, this ported one to this outside. And then, uh, and then we'll give it a quick run around and see what it looks like. All right, so here you can see we've got the uh, the advance connected uh, on the distributor to the uh, ported side of this uh, 34 pick three carburetor. And the last thing that we want to demonstrate, and I hope we catch this in the video, is uh, the maximum advance that, that occurs when you accelerate. Um, so you want to give around, uh, I want to say 30 uh, degrees of advance. I don't know if you can, I mean, every now and then you'll catch it. I just don't think that you can see it very well. Um, let me put this thing on the... Okay, so I got you on the tripod. Let's see if we can get the timing on this. Every now and then you get a flash of it. I think you might be able to see the, uh, the marks back there, but this, this wheel is really easy to read. Every now and then you see a blink. So I'm going to try to get to see where you can see the maximum, the maximum advance when you accelerate. But basically, it, the, uh, the advance got up to 30, which is what we're looking for on the maximum advance. All right, let's take it for a drive. All right, so a quick little review of what we went over today. Uh, we verified the timing at uh, the base timing at uh, 7, point, or seven uh, degrees before top dead center. We reviewed the different ports that are available on the distributor that comes off of the fuel-injected 1600 engine uh, and uh, this port right here is now connected to that port on the 34 pick 3 carburetor which is the conversion um, and, and that made it run pretty well it uh, it operated really really well with there we were able to confirm with uh, a couple of these vacuum pipes uh, which of those ports do what and uh, we were able to see them in real time the difference as you accelerate which ones react and which ones don't. Use my uh, nifty laser um, uh, RPM gauge so we can see what the, 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 the idle speed was. And we confirmed the timing both at idle and at maximum acceleration. Uh, at idle would be seven degrees before top dead center and at max it's 30 degrees before top dead center for adv the maximum advance is 30 degrees. So. Um, once you get all that together, the real big advantage is the way that it starts. Let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to confidently just walk over here. Oh, I have the keys. <laughs> I have to put the keys on. Ah. And we're going to plug it in. Make sure that it is not in gear. Okay. <laughs> and you just start it up just like that. That's how you start a car, boy. 
really dependable. Get the timing right, get your vacuum right, and everything will fall in place. That's all I got for you today. Cheers.